U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, right? We can find out the so-called CPI number for major urban areas, United States, metro areas, Atlanta, Boston, Dallas, Detroit, Los Angeles. But the U.S. federal government does not treat every city equally. Some cities are more important than others. So, for example, if I open New York, you can see the Bureau of Labor Statistics, right, reports a CPI number for every month for New York City. But remember, for example, for Houston, here, Houston, Texas, right, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics only report a number every other month. And for Houston, it's on the even-numbered month, February, April, June. And for Dallas, that's on odd-numbered months, January, March, May, July. Okay, so this number you can see, you can, for a fixed city, so for example, New York City, right? In January 2010, the CPI number is roughly 238. And in January 2020, this number is 282. So now this number is bigger than 10 years ago, right? That just means the higher this number is, the more expensive to live in that city. So this just means over time, it costs, you, it costs you more money to live in New York City. So where this number from? Here, I will give a, I will give a very simple demonstration. So first, we have to define a basket of goods and services bought by a typical consumer in the USA. So I want to make the idea very simple. So suppose a typical market consumer only buys two items per month to, to live. One item is bread, the other one is juice. And we have to fix this quantity first. Notice that for this title quantity, right, I code it in red. So that means this number 20 means a typical American consumer has to buy 20 pieces of bread and 10 bottles of juice every month to maintain so-called decent quality of life. So quantity is fixed in the calculation of consumer price index. But what is rolling or what is changing over time? That is price. So in the next three columns, we have price information for each item over three years. We have 2017 price, 2018 price, and the 2019 price. So for example, in the year 2017, right, to buy each piece of bread, you had to pay $2, and then you had to pay $4 to buy each bottle of juice. And the price is getting higher over time. Remember, this is called inflation. And in the next year, 2018, you had to pay $2.50 to buy one piece of bread and $5 for juice. In the year 2019, you had to pay $3 for each piece of bread and again, $5 for each bottle of juice. Okay, in the first step, so the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS, had to fix a basket of goods and services. In this case, only two, bread and juice. And they have to keep quantity fixed. That means to maintain a decent quality of life, a living standard, right? American consumer needs to consume 20 pieces of bread and a 10 bottle of juice. Next, we have to calculate the cost of this basket for each year. So for example, we have year 2017, right? Remember, quantity is fixed, $20 per bread times $2 in the year 2017. Plus, each consumer has to drink 10 bottles of juice. So 10 multiplies 4, which is the price for each bottle of juice in the year 2017. So what's the answer here? So that is a 40 plus 40, which is equal to $80. So that means to buy this basket of goods and services, which includes 20 pieces of bread and a 10 bottle of juice, a typical American consumer has to pay $80 in the year 2017. And this is kind of repetitive. We do this also for the year 2018. Remember, quantity is a fix in this case. So again, in the year 20, 2018, a consumer has to buy or eat 20 pieces of bread multiplies, now the price is higher, $2.50. Plus, again, the quantity is fixed, 
10 bottles of juice times five dollars per bottle of juice now. So that is equal to what is 20 plus two, sorry, what is 20 times 2.5? That is 50, right? Plus 10 times five, which is also 50. And the answer is equal to $100. So that means to buy the same basket of goods and services, 20 breaths, 10 bottles of juice, in the year 2018, a consumer has to pay $100 more expensive. And again, it's repetitive. We do it one more time for the year 2019. Again, 20 pieces of bread times now, what's this 2019 price? $3 plus quantity the same. 10 out of the juice, right? Multiplies now with the price still $5, which is equal to, so that is 20 times 3, that is 60, plus 10 times 5, which is 50. The answer is $110. So that means in the year 2019, right, to buy, again, to buy the same basket of goods and services, 20 breaths, 10 bottles of juice, this typical American consumer now has to pay $110. Okay, so this step, we have to calculate the cost for this basket for each year. And again, keep in mind, what is the fix? Quantity is always a fix. So let me highlight these numbers in red. So quantity is a fix. Only price is what is rolling. Okay. So what's the next step? Next. Just like remember how we calculate the real GDP, right? We have to pick a base year. So we apply the same procedure. We pick a base year. How to pick a base year is arbitrary. What, whatever year you like. So in this case, I choose the year 2017 as my base year. Okay. So now let me color it in green. So what's the purpose of choosing the base year? So that means we the base year cost for this basket of goods and services, right? It is $80. Okay. Then how to calculate the CPI? Remember what CPI? It is the acronym for what? Consumer Price Index, right? So CPI, so basically, it is a ratio. So what is that ratio? So the cost of, so for example, let me do it like this. I want to calculate 2018 CPI. How should I do that? So 2018 CPI is equal to what? The cost for this basket of goods and the services in the year 2018 divided by the cost for the same basket of goods and services in which year? In this year, which is the year 2017, right? And then multiplies this ratio by 100. And now let me do some plug-in. So how much money do you have to buy? How much money do you have to pay for this basket of goods and services in the year 2018? Here, remember, you have to pay $100. So $100, numerator. What's the denominator? What's the cost for this basket in my base year, which is 2017, right? $80, so divided by $80. And it multiplies this ratio by 100. So what's the answer here? What is 100 divided by 80 multiplies 100? The answer is one, two, five. Keep in mind, there's no dollar sign. Why? Dollar sign here, dollar sign here, numerator, denominator, top, bottom, right? They canceled out. So CPI is unit free. It is just a number. So the CPI for the year 2018, right, in this case, is 125. Now let me go back a little bit. 
what is the 17 CPI, which is what? The cost in the year 2017, right? Divided by the cost for this basket of goods and services in this year. Again, times 100. But remember, which year the base year? 2017, right? So what do we have here? We have 80 divided by 80 multiplies 100. So what's the answer here? Can you tell me the answer without a calculator? The answer is 100. So the CPI for the base year is always equal to 100. And again, this is kind of like a repetitive. Let me do this one more time for the year 2019 CPI. So 2019 CPI is equal to, again, the cost for this basket of goods and services. What's this basket? You need to buy bread, you need to buy juice, right? And how many quantity? 20 piece of bread and 10 bottles of juice. So the cost in the year 2019 divided by the cost in again, this year, which is this year, 2017, multiplies this ratio by 100. And what's the cost in the year 2019? Here, $110 divided by this year cost, right? The same, $80 multiplies 100. And I need to use a calculator to find out the result. So 110 divided by 80 multiplies 100. It is equal to 137.5. So that means the consumer price index for the year 2019 is equal to 137.5. Did you see this number is getting bigger and bigger over time, right? What's intuition? That means over time, you have to pay more money to buy the same set of stuff. Or that means it costs you more money to maintain the same standard of living or quality of life. What's the standard of living? You need to eat 20 pieces of bread, 10 you need to drink 10 bottles of juice, right? But the cost is getting higher and higher over time. Why? Right? You can see the price here. In the year 2017, you only need to pay $2 per piece of bread. But in the year 2019, you have to pay $3 per piece of bread. So the CPI just gives us a basic idea how costly to live in a particular city or how costly for you to buy stuff you have to buy to make a living. And this number is getting higher and higher over time in this case. It just means over, over time, it costs you more money to buy the same set of stuff. Okay. So this is the basic idea about how to calculate the consumer price index. So in reality, the basket of goods and services is way more complicated. And if you are interested, you can go to its website and you can find it somewhere. It includes thousands of items. It's way more complicated. Here, I just give her a simple idea. This basket only involves two items. First, the government had to figure out what those items should be included in this basket. Next, they had to figure out quantity, how many or how much a consumer needs to buy every month. Next, they had to figure out a price for each year, and they can calculate the cost for this basket for each particular year, then pick a year as a base year. Then, using the above information, we can calculate the CPI, the consumer price index for every year. But this is not the end of story. We can calculate, again, inflation rate using CPI. So there are many ways to calculate the inflation rate. Remember, what's inflation rate? How fast prices are rising over time, right? So for example, if the inflation rate in the year 2019 is 2%, that means compared with last period, maybe 2018, on average, everything is getting more expensive. By how much? By 2%. So inflation rate gives you some idea how fast prices are rising on average in the economy over time. So when we talk about GDP, we can calculate the inflation rate using the so-called GDP deflator, but that's not very popular in reality. So if you read the basic news 
or if it was based on TV shows, right? That inflation rate reported, for example, at CNN, CNBC, right? That inflation rate is more likely to be calculated based on the consumer price index instead of the GDP deflator. So how to calculate the inflation rate using CPI? Remember, what's the general formula to calculate the inflation rate? The inflation rate, the general formula, it involves a ratio what's on top. It's current price index, right? Minus last period price index. This part, I use a pair of parentheses. They all belong to the numerator. Denominator divided by last period price index. And the result is usually converted into a percentage. So this is a generic formula. When we talk about GDP, we use the GDP deflator as a price index. But now, since I have introduced the consumer price index, right, we are going to plug in these numbers here to calculate the inflation rate. So for example, if I want to calculate 2018 inflation rate, how to do that? What's on top? Current price index. Current year will be 2018, right? The price index, one, two, five. Minus, what is my last period price index? The year before 2018, 2017, right? 100 here, minus 100. Divided by denominator, last period price index. Again, last period, 2017, 100. And what's the answer here? which is equal to 0 0.25, right? Let's convert it into percentage. So 24%. So the inflation rate in the year 2018 is 24%. That means on average, everything is getting more expensive. By how much? By 24%. And it's repetitive. We do it one more time for the year 2019 inflation rate. Now, what's current price index? Since we are look at 2019 right so the current period becomes 2019 and this number is 137.5 what's the last period price index the year before 2019 is 2018 which is 125 minus 125 divided by last period cpi right last period 2018 cpi 125 the answer is, I need to use a calculator. The answer is equal to 0 0.1, which is 10% in percentage. That means from the year 2018 to 2019, again, in this very simple economy, right? You can see everything is getting more expensive. How much? By roughly 10%. So that's the idea.